Our scripture tonight is from Matthew chapter 6, 19 through 24. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, nor thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, nor thieves do not break in and steal. For your treasure is, there your heart will also be. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness, and then the light within you is darkness. How great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either he will love one and hate the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and me. Basically, that means I like to make cool videos. Um, I'm from Spring Hill, Tennessee. I have played soccer here, but now I'm done because I'm a senior. Hola. And um, so, kind of how I came to be right here where I'm standing is I wasn't a Christian growing up. Um, I didn't grow up in the church. My parents didn't um, raise me that way. I didn't go to Sunday school. I didn't go to. Um, in, I didn't learn anything about the Bible. Um, and so my senior year of high school, I came to know Christ um, through a Bible study with some of my friends, and that was a transition period, let me tell you. I'm going into college next year, um, I'm a senior in high school, and it's just a totally different um, environment because I'm leaving my home, Spring Hill, Tennessee, and coming here to Indianapolis where I don't know anyone. So God knew that I needed a community of people to be around. I needed a community of people who would challenge me and help me make the right decisions to be set apart from the world, um, something that I had never done before. Um, so that was a very interesting journey. And when I got here, um, I'm so thankful that God gave me a community of believers to be a part of. I joined a girls' dorm Bible study. Um, and Corey Brett's led by Eden and Hannah. And um, they definitely helped challenge me and I definitely think I challenged them because I came in and I was like, I don't know all these Bible stories and I don't understand all of this, but um, I want to know. I, want, I had such a thirst and such a hunger to know more about um, what it's like to be a Christian. And then I was, um, on the soccer team, obviously, and there wasn't a lot of Christians on the soccer team, um, but I was thankful for the few that I did have that I could share my struggle with, and I knew that there was a need on this campus for um, Christian athletes and our walk and just the daily grind of what it's like to be a Christian athlete because we share such a similar struggle and a similar walk um, as athletes. So um, my friend Healy Miller and I helped start Fellowship of Christian Athletes on campus, which was totally out of my comfort zone because I had only been a Christian for a year. And now I was kind of being asked to lead a Bible study. And I had no idea what that was supposed to look like or anything. So God really just came in for me and just really helped guide me in that walk um, and what it's like to be a leader, especially a Christian leader. And you know, over my course of my college career, God has definitely presented me with a lot of opportunities to lead, and I just still can't, it blows my mind that I'm even up here standing in front of you guys, um, because I would have not have seen my life ever to be where it is right now, and I'm just so thankful that it is. Um, so, I'm not going to talk about my testimony tonight, I'm going to talk about decisions, and how many of you guys are good at making decisions? Oh, no one. <laughs> Neither am I. Um, how many of you know what you're doing after graduation? Okay, great. No one. Good. I'm, not, I'm glad I'm not the only one freaking out. So, yeah. Oh, God. Um, decisions are tough, y'all, and no one's really good at making them. Except for you. I saw you being like, okay, maybe I can make a decision. <laughs> All right. So, 
I'm going to tell two stories tonight, um, two decisions that I've had to make recently. And the first one started with over Christmas break. Um, I had the time to sit down and get my life together. I was ready to uh, get my cover letter, my resume, and for as a communication major, I'm supposed to make a resume reel, um, which is a bunch of clips <coughs> thrown together um, to show what I'm capable of, what I can do with video, and send out to potential employers. So I sat down, very beginning of Christmas break, I was very motivated. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get this done, I'm gonna get started, it's gonna look great. And I just, I started and I got way overwhelmed. I got in over my head. Just a whole bunch of different things were coming into my head. I was so set on getting a job when I graduated. That was my main focus. I was like, okay, um, I'm going to move back to Tennessee, find a job in Nashville, Knoxville, or Chattanooga, um, work for a production company, get my own apartment, somehow find a job and be able to support myself. And it got to the point where I was obsessing over it. Um, I had definitely, um, that's how I pictured my life going and being, and it brought me a lot of anxiety. Um, and my biggest priority was being secure when I graduate, because my parents are divorced, and for anybody um, who has divorced parents, they can relate probably where you have all your stuff at one house, and then you have to go to the other house and some of your stuff gets left behind and then your stuff is just like sprung out all over the place. And it can be really frustrating. So then I move up here and I have stuff all over the United States. So <laughs> uh, one of my biggest concerns was I just really want a place to call my own, a place where I can put my stuff and I don't have to have it spread out all over the place. So I was so concerned, so focused on being secure, being able to provide for myself and have my own place to put my things. And I know that's just so silly, but that's what I was um, focusing on and how that was my big priority. And so by the end of Christmas break, I was so anxious about what to do with my life and I stopped doing my resume and my cover letter and I just I just stopped and I said, you know what, maybe I won't get a good job when I graduate. I'm just going to not make a decision right now. And the things I was thinking about, it doesn't sound very godly, does it? So, story number two. Um, I was asked to speak at chapel, as you all know. Um, I was asked to speak back in November. And I was like, sure, why not? I'll get up and talk in front of people. It's not a big deal, I guess. And then January rolls around. And... Two weeks ago, I get an email from Madison, and she's like, hey, Megan, um, we have you scheduled to speak on the 5th at Chapel. Is that still something you're interested in? See, now it was a decision. Now it was a choice. I was like, oh, I don't have to do this if I don't want to. I can actually get out of this. So what I ended up doing, I didn't, t I didn't email her back. I literally just didn't say a word. <laughs> I'm not going to deal with this right now. So, a week goes by. I get three more emails from Madison. <laughs> um, we still want you to speak at chapel. Uh, can you email me back so we can get a meeting set up and figure out what you want to talk about? And I'm like, oh my god, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Y'all, I had no idea. And that was like stressing me out. So, again, I continue to ignore Madison's emails. <laughs> week. Now, it's a week out, y'all. I still have not answered Madison. I still have not made the decision or anything. And I'm freaking out because now I'm getting texts from her. <laughs> My phone's broken. I'm not answering. Sorry. Didn't answer. So she's like, hey, Megan, like, we need to know tomorrow by 4 o'clock. Now I had a deadline. I'm freaking out, y'all. So that doesn't sound very godly, does it? So what do I mean when I say it doesn't sound very godly? I've been reading this book called The Best Yes, I actually have it, um, Making Wise Decisions in the Midst of Endless Demands by Lisa Turkhurst. Um, it's funny because my Bible study uh, teacher from Spring Hill, Tennessee, who kind of got me started and helped me, or lead me to Christ, she gave me this book over Christmas break and she's like, I think you have some decisions you need to make coming up here soon, so here's a book for you. I'm like, thank you, I'm actually going to need this, this is my life right now. <laughs> um, so this book has literally been awesome, and it's kind of 
um, been helping me guide, uh, help guiding me, help, yeah, help guiding me to make um, these make these decisions in a godly way. Um, so I've talked about two decisions I needed to make tonight. The decision of what to do when I'm going to graduate, and the decision of whether I'm not going to speak at chapel, <laughs> which y'all probably have uh, figured out what I decided. Um, but in the book, it talks about three questions I need to ask myself when making a godly decision. The first being, have you been reading and praying through God's word lately? The second, have you been applying God's word in your life lately? And third, have you sought godly counsel and insights from wise people who know specifics about your situation? So let's go back to decision one. So there's something else I've been thinking about um, post-graduation. And it was kind of just an idea that I was toying around with. And I was like, I said it randomly to my dad one day. Hey, Dad, what do you think about me going and traveling the world when I graduate? He kind of just looked at me and laughed and didn't want to take me seriously. But I was kind of serious. Um, So now I kind of had a little bit of a choice um, that I was really kind of thinking about. Like, I really would like to go and do something after I graduate rather than get a job and be constrained to that. So question one, have I been reading and praying through God's word lately? I actually had been at the time, and one story that was sticking out in particular um, was when Jesus asked the fishermen to leave all their belongings, leave their jobs, leave everything, and just come and follow him. Um, That really just stuck out to me for a lot of reasons, Um, mainly because they left all of their belongings and went and followed Jesus. And that was something that I was struggling with is I wanted to be with my stuff. I wanted to have that secure place. And um, I just, that was my focus was that, the, my belongings. Uh, question two, have you been applying God's word in your life lately? I hadn't because my focus was on these worldly things, on these worldly treasures, um, getting an apartment, you know, being able to provide for myself. And that was that was just something so I just needed it. And, you know, I told y'all, I, like, I was upset. I was really anxious about that. Um, and then question three, have you sought godly counsel and insights from wise people who know specifics about your situation? And when I started really considering um, traveling the world or going on a mission trip, um, I started talking to my mentor back at home my mentor here and a lot of other wise friends and they like talking out loud and talking about my decision with um, these wise people in my life really helped starting to put some things together that I hadn't seen um, when I was trying to make this decision. So let's go back to decision two. Um, I was at a standstill. I hadn't told Madison that I was going to speak at chapel um, and I thought I could get away with just not making a decision but what I didn't realize is not making a decision was still making the decision. It was making the decision to stay the same. So I hadn't even prayed about it or done anything to move forward. I just knew that I was afraid to get up here and stand. Um, I wanted to be selfish with my time. And I just kept having excuses and excuses of why I didn't want to come up here and stand and talk to you guys today. Um, So in uh, this book, The Best Yes, Um, Lisa talks about there being five parts to making a decision, and the first and fifth are very similar. Um, They're kind of like the top and bottom of a hamburger. Mm -hmm. They are made out of the same dough, but they look a little bit different, Um, and they hold the process together. Um, And they both involve trusting God. So the first one, trusting God by placing my desire under his authority, analyzing the decision, making the decision, owning the decision, and trusting God to work good, even through the not so good parts. How many times do I not put my trust in God? Way too many to count. How many times do I, is my focus not on God? Like all the time. And that's why I'm up here admitting that too, because I know that that resonates with a lot of us today. Like I know it's so difficult to trust God in making decisions and um, we, our focus just drifts so often to earthly treasures and storing up earthly treasures instead of looking towards God for those heavenly treasures. And so I wasn't focused on God when I was making these two decisions. I was focusing on my personal gain, 
um, for getting a job when I graduated so that I could be secure. Um, and, I was, and I was just being selfish about not wanting to get up here and talk today. And I also like being dramatic and stressing Madison out. <laughs> um, the point is, like, we steer where we stare. If we are looking at things that are not godly, then we are going to live ungodly lives. We are going to make ungodly decisions. If we're constantly focused on um, things of this world, we're going to live of this world life. And we're not called to that. We're called to um, be set apart from this world. And the core issue is that it all, like, we aren't the master provider, God is. And I was so set on being the master provider for myself. I wanted to be able to provide for myself. I wanted to be able to have a job and be secure and be in my own place with my own apartment. And, you know, be successful, be that um, stereotype and fit in today's mold of just, you know, if you have a job, you're successful, and you have money, you're doing great in life. And that was just where I was focusing on, and that's where I was, my course was uh, going. And my eyes weren't fixed on Jesus. I wasn't trusting him um, to, you know, make, help make me, help me make this decision, or both of these decisions. And when I finally um, refocused, looked at where I was staring, and saw that I wasn't staring at God, um, I was able to make a godly decision and using uh, these points that I've talked about. So, that being said, you all obviously know the resolution to my second decision as I'm standing up here. But um, I am very excited to announce that I will not be getting a job when I graduate. Instead, I will be um, leaving all of my belongings, leaving everything that I had been focusing on for the last couple of months, and I am leaving the country for six months. I'm going to Australia, Perth, Australia, and doing an admission trip with human trafficking. And it's with an organization called um, Youth with a Mission. And this is something that, looking back, it is incredible to see how God has orchestrated this together. And you know, uh, we've a lot of people in here have talked about human trafficking before, and it's kind of a hot topic, but like that is something that has been on my heart since freshman year, and I'm just like absolutely so thankful that this um, opportunity has been presented to me. And I know it's just because I started focusing on Jesus, and the um, opportunity was presented because my focus shift from um, earthly treasures to heavenly treasures. Um, but my point isn't that like I'm going off and leaving everything and gonna go the, leave the country for six months because um, for me that's what I needed to do. That was the drastic decision that I needed to make. Um, but for you guys, like I don't know what your decision is. I don't know what you're called to um, when you graduate. It could be a job. It could be to get an apartment and place for all your things. But I just want to stress, like, don't try and do it on your own. Trust in God that whatever decision you make, He's going to come through. He's going to be there. He's going to be the master provider in your life. Um, so stop focusing on yourself and these earthly things and store up your treasures in heaven um, and help God lead you in your decision making, um, whether it be big, like what you're going to do when you graduate, or a simple one of, you know, upping up to your calling and coming here and talking to you guys tonight. Ooh.